bless the Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, would you please turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 14. And I'm going to read verses 21 through 28. Exodus, chapter 14. Verses 23 to 28. Say amen when you have that. Amen. amen. And this is Moses and the children of Israel having one of the biggest days of their life. The text reads this way, starting in 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. The waters were divided. Then the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. And the waters were all a wall unto them on their right hand and to them on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians, took off their chariot wheels, they that drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord's fighting for them against the Egyptians. Yeah. And the Lord said, unto Moses. Listen. Stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its strength. When the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them remained not so much as one of them. Pray with me this morning, please. I want to talk to you on the subject of drown that devil. Yeah. I don't know if you heard it. Drown that devil. Yeah. Father, we love you today. We bless you. We honor you. Because you make your wisdom and your ways plain. Remind the things you have spoken to me and have revealed to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. I've discovered, saints, that in my desire to live a quiet and uh, minding my own business type of lifestyle, mm -hmm. that as I aspire and God promotes and takes me through the next level of life, I have come to the conclusion that some devils are simply going to chase me. It, it, it is like no matter what I do, no matter what you do, because of the way God is doing and moving in your life, some people, some spiritual wickednesses and high places won't do what they should do. Some, some devils have a different type of aggression to them. This devil is just decided it's going to chase them. The Lord has told Moses, hey, we're moving and I want you to walk through on dry ground. But I need you to think with me this morning because someone may be here. Someone may be listening. And someone may be wondering 
Why is this particular devil still in my life? Why, 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 why isn't this devil, when I have a word, I can speak to this devil? When I, I've done everything that I should do, I, I've lined up everything, I, I've been coming, I've been faithful, but why is this devil still chasing me? I need you to think with me, and I need you to come to this conclusion with me that some devils simply just won't go away. Some of them just don't have good sense. They will just chase you and prod you and make you uncomfortable. And you will go someplace where you think you can shake them and lo and behold. Have you ever been there? This devil is still chasing me. I don't know if you know it, but I've been called to be a watchman. And I want to inform you that there is some devils chasing the church. And not only are they chasing the church, these devils are the master of deception and seduction. Uh -huh. So what they do is they chase the church and they look like saints, but they really are devils with a scheme and a plan. Do you know that church people and kingdom people, it is your nature and your natural response to your salvation to want to do good deeds. Yeah, you, you want to do good deeds because I'm saved now. You want to go down to the homeless camp and give people things and bless them because I'm saved now. You, you, you want to give and love and, and do all those things that the church ought to do like, because you are saved now and you want to have an impact on your community, on your home, on everything you do because you are saved now. But there is a devil that is chasing the church that wants to do good works but doesn't want to do it in Jesus' name. I hope someone's listening this morning. Since we are the church, and since we are saved in Jesus' name, everything I do is in Jesus' name. People who are not saved can do good works. People who don't know the Lord can start foundations and heal and do good things which are good, but they don't do them in Jesus' name. So what the devil that is chasing the church is doing right now is he's attacking pastors and he's attacking churches that might be sleepy because they want to do good works and they're saying do them, but don't do them in Jesus' name. You're going to hear me this uh, yeah, yeah, and, and some churches are that they're not privy to the devil's schemes because they naturally want to do good works. So these devils just say, no, we can do them, we can bless the community, we can do everything, but what we're going to do is don't tell them that we are doing it in Jesus' name. Oh, hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? Why? I don't do nothing if it ain't in Jesus' name. I don't got to hide Jesus' name, then bless somebody, then all of a sudden throw a little Jesus on the side. What are you talking about? I was saved in Jesus' name. I was delivered in Jesus' name. I walk in Jesus' name. I breathe in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name that I move and pass my being. How do you want me to do something not in Jesus' name? Look at somebody and say, drown that devil. What you talking about? Some devils you just got to drown. Why, why would you want me to do something? Not in Jesus' name. I, would, I wish I could talk to some pastors this morning. I got to talk to somebody. So I can tell you, inform you, the devil that's coming to your church. The reason why the devil wants you to do good works in no one's name is that the world will like you and the church can skip over persecution if they don't do it in Jesus' name. You ain't gonna help me preach. Because all of the people around us will love us as long as we don't heal them in Jesus' name. All the people around us will come and get 
get our food as long as we don't feed them in Jesus' name. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And as long as we don't do it in Jesus' name, the world will like you. So the church is being chased by a devil that is trying to get it to do things not in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me this morning? I hope you got your ears on. And this is the type of devil that you can't negotiate with. This is uh, the type of devil uh, that you can't keep talking to. Uh, and this is uh, the type of devil that will chase you when it don't even make sense. And I came to tell you uh, that your only option is you're going to have to drown this devil. Because if you operate in Jesus' name, the world's going to hate you. If you're going to feed the homeless in Jesus' name, everybody's not going to be your friend. And Jesus is not interested in you working not in his name, then just pull him out when it's convenient. Drown that devil. Drown him. This devil wants you to think and reason like favor. Mm -hmm. When you have a devil that oppresses you, when you have a devil that addicts you, when you have a devil that you can't shake, this devil wants to manipulate you and oppress you that you may serve that devil's purpose. Uh -huh. so, so, so it wants you to serve its purpose so it makes you so dependent on it no matter how fast you run you can't outrun it can you hear me yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it makes you dependent on it that, that's why Pharaoh couldn't take it when and Moses said uh, God told me I'm going to let, to let us go uh, and, and Pharaoh said no, no, no. hold on now. you need me I own you but you can't breathe without me you can't think without me what do you mean you're going to leave so that even though they left by faith the devil is crazy enough that's been oppressing you to still chase you you going to help me this devil will chase you especially when you decree and declare I'm through with you I'm moving he's going to chase you I'm through getting high He's going to chase you. I'm through being a racist. He's going to chase you. I'm tired of tripping up over the same devil. I will be at church. He's going to trace you. I will go to Bible study. He's going to raise you. You're going to have to look at that devil and say, I'm going to have to drown this devil. Quit negotiating with a terrorist type devil. Listen close. In 1 Samuel chapter 20. 
you don't have to turn there. Uh, Jonathan and David were real good friends. And Saul, David's boss, had let the devil get a hold of him. So David had to be on the run. Watch. So he wasn't sure, like some of y'all listen to me, sure if the devil was going to chase him. Can you hear me now? Yes, so David and Saul, I mean David and Jonathan said, let's run a test on this devil. Even though this devil in this sense was Jonathan's dad. We're going to have a dinner. And after dinner, David, you're going to just not be missing. Don't come to the dinner. I'm going to bring your name up at dinner. Watch this. And when I bring your name up in front of the devil that's chasing you, the way he acts is going to reveal if you need to stay in town or if you need to run. I wish somebody would help me. Are you hearing me? I'm trying to tell you this devil's going to chase you, but let me prove it to you. So when Jonathan was at the table, Saul said, where David at? Jonathan said, no, David had some business he had to take care of. And, uh, and tried to protect uh, uh, David. And, 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 and Saul is Jonathan's father. The devil got so mad inside of Saul. Not only did he not run after David, uh, he picked up a javelin on a sword that was next to the dinner table. Uh, and he hurled it at his own son. This devil is tenacious. It will turn on his own family to chase him. It will turn on everything. Not only did it uh, uh, turn Just by asking if he was going to chase him. <laughs> You're going to have to drown this day. You, you don't hear what I'm saying. It was so much bitterness and anger, the anointing that was on David's life. Uh, he was so jealous and so covetousness that he tried to kill his own son because this type of devil must chase the anointing. And you wonder why you're struggling. I'm glad you came to church today. Let, let, me, let me tell you, one of the first clues of that you know that when you have are walking in the flesh and when you are being led by the Spirit, because sometimes it's hard to tell because you can give out pizza to the homeless, but you can do it in the flesh. I wish I could help somebody. You can hide behind good deeds when the devil has gotten a hold of you and you can't even have enough discernment to know he's chasing you. So you're just walking around doing good things. But the first, one of the sure signals of that it is flesh, the first thing that happens is you don't have no boundaries. Flesh has no boundaries. None. None. You can't tell nobody nothing that's walking in the flesh. They'll do anything. Saul lost all of his boundaries so that he would even try to kill his son because this devil has no boundaries. None. Somebody walking in the flesh, you can't tell them nothing. David got in the flesh and he seen someone's wife. Yes. But since he wasn't walking the way he should, you know what left? Boundaries. Yeah. You ain't gonna help me preach. Yeah. He seen some naked woman, baby, and they said, no, David, I know you're the king, but that's somebody's wife. Yeah. But even though you're the king, right now you're walking in the flesh and your boundaries have escaped you. You can't tell nobody nothing that is operating in the flesh. They'll tell on themselves. They'll think they'll come to do good deeds, but the flesh will reveal you ain't got no boundaries. So I know that the devil is chasing you and you can let him catch you. You gonna help me? And the only thing left for you to do is quit negotiating with this devil. Quit tickling this devil's feet. Quit playing with this devil's toys. Quit watching this devil's shows. The only thing left for you to do is drown that devil. Are you with me this morning? It gets 
interesting. Because when the children of Israel began to run, they didn't realize that the devil was going to chase them as well. And when the devil started chasing them in the form of Pharaoh, it was revealed that they had been oppressed and stuck on this level so long that they were starting to think like Pharaoh. Oh, yes, yes. This is what's going to happen if you don't drown this devil. Yes. Either drown this devil or start thinking like this devil. No. Let me prove it to you. Exodus 14 verse 3 says this. Listen. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel. This is what he's chasing. This is what he said. They are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shut them in. Let me make it plain. He's chasing the children of God. Yes, sir. God leads the children into a dry place. Yes, yes. Leads them into a Red Sea. Yes. Where it becomes impossible for anything to happen. Yes. And Pharaoh's thinking is. God led his children into the trap. So when God leads you into a wilderness. And you interpret it as a trap, you're thinking like the devil that's chasing you. Did you hear what I just said? Some of y'all lose your mind when you get in a place of impossibility. That's because the devil that is chasing you has got in your mind, and you think what is impossible is what is to cause you to shut in. So you say, This devil has shut me in. That's because you've been running from him too long. Now you think like he's thinking. Because I can't promote you until I take you to a dry place. Yeah. But you'll be stuck in the dry place if you think the dry place was designed to shut you in. Yeah. That's how devil's thing. Devil, yeah. let me teach you a little bit today. Yeah. He said the dry place, then shut him in. Yeah. And here we sing in the same thing. Yeah. We just went through a season of a wilderness about two and a half years. Yeah. And a lot of the church believe that we were shut in. Yeah. I'm going to leave that alone. Yes, sir. Huh? What, 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 are you thinking like the devil is chasing you? Uh -huh. Has he gotten too close and that you ain't drowned him that he thinks like you now? You can't even be led through a test without thinking God is trapping you? I got news for you. You better drown that devil. Drown him. Drown him. Watch this. This is, this is amazing. When, when, when you think that the dry place in the wilderness or the Red Sea is a place of demotion and a lack of God's ability to lead you, you are thinking more like the devil than ever before. This is what happens. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, you know this. The Bible says this. The spirit of the Lord led Jesus out into the desert to be tested. Some of y'all, God couldn't lead in the desert if he slapped you in the face because you wouldn't go. But the desert is the place where you can be proved. I led you to a dry place so that I can prove to the devil that you can walk over on dry ground. But I can't prove nothing to nobody because I can't lead them. Because every time I lead them and it gets uncomfortable, they won't go because they're thinking like the devil that's chasing them. Isn't that something? Yeah. So what happens, you get stuck on the same level year after year because yeah. you won't go to the wilderness. You better team up with the world and be comfortable than tell the world, I'm going to heal, I'm going to serve, I'm going to do everything in Jesus' name if it costs me my life. I sure hope somebody's listening to that. And the Lord told me, no, no, don't, don't think like him. Don't be scared. I can't even test you so that I can prove you. Because I realize that my flesh will never lead me into an uncomfortable place. It has no boundaries for luxury. My flesh will never do nothing that'll 
put birth and growth in my spirit. It will never do it. Not on a good day. It, it, it just won't do it. So the spirit of the Lord has to lead the children of Israel into the desert. But I can't do the miracle until they stop thinking like the devil that's chasing them. Does anybody go help me? So this is what happens. The, bread, the, the wilderness is the place that God wants to transfer your dependence from the devil you used to depend on to keep you high, addicted, and oppressed to full dependence on him. I'm going to take you to a dry place so that you can run from the devil who wants to oppress you. You've been working for him too long now. But I'm going to take you to a place where I can humble you so that all of your help might come from the Lord. It's always come from the Lord, but you don't know it because you keep flirting with the devil that's chasing you. So I'm going to send you to a dry place. I'm going to give a miracle. I'm going to give you a place where it's impossible. I'm going to lead you to a Red Sea where the devil himself can't deliver you. I'm about to take you to the next level so that you can look at that devil and drown him. you would be fully and completely dependent on me and look at that devil and drown him. Yeah. Yeah. Drown that racist devil. Drown that addictive devil. Drown that oppressive devil. Drown that devil. Yeah. Yeah. That devil that's trying to get you to work out of Jesus' name. You can't do nothing if it ain't in Jesus' name. You got saved in his name. Matter of fact, the book says in Acts chapter 4 and 12, uh, there is no other name which my men may be saved. So why would you try to do me to get any work outside? Drown that devil. Drown him. Quit flirting with that devil. Drown him. I'm not going to be fighting with this same devil next year. No.
Moses stretched out the rock. He divided the sea. And then they begin to walk through the sea by faith. Watch this. When they was walking through the sea, the Bible says that the Red Sea had split into two walls. Walls as tall as we don't know. They're walking by faith. It seems scary. There is a sea of water that can drown them at the drop of a dime. But he had used the rod to split the sea. And he wanted them to reference the water. Because the same water, which was a wall of a protection for them that went in by faith, was going to be a wall of judgment that went in for those that went in by covetousness. Watch this. So when he told them, I want you now to stretch out your rod and bring the sea back, that's a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, hold on, God. Yes, sir. You, I know I had enough faith to walk through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But are you telling me that you want me to close the sea and drown the devil? That's chasing me. Are, are you ain't hearing what I'm saying? Oh, Moses, I grew up with some of the people. You ain't hearing what I'm saying? Moses was raised with the people. I, yeah, yeah, they used to call me brother. I, I, I was raised on the lap of Pharaoh. I'm re almost related to some of them. Are you telling me that the same sea that opened, you want me to close it? You ain't saying nothing to me. God, are you telling me that you want me to close? You want me to use the same rod that got me in. You want me to close the sea and drown this devil. Wow. He said, yeah. This is what I want you to do, Moses. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I have a promise for my church. Yes. And I have a promise for my kingdom. Yes. Yes. Because before he stretched out his hand and went over the sea, God said to Moses, this Egyptians yes. and this devil, you won't see no more. But the only reason you keep seeing them is that you won't drown them. I gave you a promise that if you would close the sea and drown the addiction, if you would close the sea and drown the spirit of seduction, you won't see that same devil no more. But you got scared when I told you to drown the devil that was chasing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all. He said, stretch out your hand uh, and drown that devil. No matter how friendly that devil is, stretch out your hand and close the sea on that devil because the, the uh, Israelites, they went in by faith. But the Pharaohites, they didn't go in by faith. It was covetousness that was chasing them and driving them. That devil is chasing you because it'll never be satisfied. It'll always want something. It'll always cause you to be addicted. God said, turn on that devil and drown that devil. And if you drown that devil, this is the calling. He said, I want you to drown everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If it's not what I said, turn around, stop and drown it. Drown. Drown it down. Well, Jesus said it this way. Because I know somebody's looking at the saying, this brother's all in the Old Testament. Yeah. All right. Huh? Jesus. Well, Jesus said the same thing in the New Testament. Yeah. Well, how do you say it? Yeah. Well, 
Well, Matthew chapter 5 and 29 says, if your right eye offends you. Yeah, yeah. Huh? He said, if your right eye offends you, I, I want you to pluck it out. In other words, drown it. You ain't saying nothing. If you got a phone that you can't stop looking at pornography on, get rid of the phone. Now, if you got a TV that you keep indulging in unholy things, drown it. Whatever is causing you to walk with a limp, whatever is chasing you, Jesus said, cut it, kill it. Drown! Yes, it is. He said it would be more profitable for you for your members of the parish than the whole body to be cast into hell. Then he said, yeah, and if your right hand is you, oh, you can't get no closer than your right hand. He said, you know what? If that right hand keeps causing you to do stuff, you know what your problem is? You won't use your faith to drown the devil. You got enough faith to get a blessing. You got enough faith to get a new house. But he said, you need to turn on that devil. If it's your right hand, drown it. Cut it off. Make no provision for the flesh. Drown it. You, you see why, that, why why folk don't come to church no more? Yeah. Because we didn't got used to a message that walks us through on dry ground, but never tells us that we got to drown the devil that's chasing that's us. Right. Because we would rather do ministry and be comfortable mm -hmm. than drown the devil that's trying to tempt us to do operate out of Jesus' name. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So he said, Moses, even though you know some of them, drown them. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. Drown them because the devil is operating in them. <laughs> and if you want my promise to come to pass in your life, I told you, you wouldn't see this devil again. You're going to fight another level. You're going to fight another devil. Up. But if you, this time on April, the same day, April 10th next year, if you don't want to be fighting the same you are fighting today. You ain't got but one thing to do. Drown. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. You ain't got no other option. Because if you keep flirting with that devil, you won't think like that devil. You won't even be able to interpret a text. You wouldn't even go to the wilderness. You wouldn't even trust God. You would rather let the devil supply all your needs. Then to go to the next level because you keep flirting with a devil that you should have drowned years ago. I hope I'm talking to some preachers this morning. I don't know who's going to see this. But in my life, I have been fighting at a level like never before. And I'm trying to ask God, what happened? He's like, stop. You have went to another level. And I was trying to get you to conclude that the only thing you can do to stay here safely is drown the devil that is chasing you. You got here by faith. <laughs> Now you will have to turn around and use the same word that got you out of the Red Sea yeah. and drown that devil yeah. by faith. Because yeah. this devil cannot be reasoned with. That's right. That's right. Stretch out your rod yeah. and close the sea back up yeah. so that this time next year you'll be fighting a brand new devil. Right. But we'll already know what to do to get rid of that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can tell that devil next year. I heard a word last year. <laughs> and if you keep chasing me, I'm giving you a word. I, I go on your own way. Go on back home, Pharaoh. It's, it's safer. Go back to your own business. Get out my world. And get out my land. Get that devil out your life. Get him out, you drown him. Stretch out your rod. 
Stretch out your rod. Right. Close the same sea that you open. Because this devil you cannot talk or do business with. Not this one. If you're watching this morning and you are struggling at the same level, you need to drown that down. Go to our website. It's hollyparkcommunity.church. Click on the visit us button. May God bless you and keep you and may you graduate to the next level in your life. Blessings.